Nigel, welcome to Mansfield Town. Thank you. After leaving Burton five months ago, you said you were waiting for the right job and the right club. Why is Mansfield Town now, for you, the right job and the right club? I think potential. Uh, I think the potential that the club has got going forward um, is very exciting indeed. And despite where we currently languish in the, in the league at the moment, that's the only downside, the league position. I think everything else is set up uh, to take the club to at least the next level. Uh, so it's, a, it's a, I think, a very good opportunity uh, to try and achieve that. Let's speak about your time at Burton Albion, where you created a real dynasty there. You took the club from the Northern Premier League to the Football League and then to the Championship. How did you go about doing that? Well, it takes time. That's the first thing. We're not miracle workers. And we started at Burton, what, over 22 years ago now, just... Uh, and we, we scraped up through the, the uni bond and into the conference. We had a few years just surviving in the conference because uh, we were still a small club uh, and then built a side that got into the playoffs and then uh, we left them with, a, a, I think, 15, 16 points clear in the, in the conference and then they made it to the Football League. And then Gary Rowett and, and Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank took it on from there and we went back on the, on the brink of the championship and we had two amazing years in the championship. Uh, but it's about good decisions, working well with owners and, uh, and everybody. And I think looking after their, their money and their finances, you look after it as though it's your own. We try not to waste money and we try to get good people in the football club. And I think if you can do that, you've got a chance. Do you see any similarities between the two clubs? Uh, well, obviously Burton, we're a couple of leagues below where, where we are now, so I think one of the hardest things when you drop out of the league is getting back in. Uh, but I think having got back in quite a few years ago now, it's ready to go to the, the next level. Uh, but no do, disrespect to Burton, everyone will accept that Mansfield are a bigger club. Um, uh, and that gives them the, the greater potential. Uh, but in terms of starting out, uh, yeah, yeah there certainly are. It needs a little bit of sorting out and we've got some work to do. Uh, and the first priority is to get up the league. Uh, and make sure that we're not fighting relegation all season. Let's speak about players. From what you know about this squad and the players perhaps on an individual basis, what's your evaluation of them? It looks a good squad on paper, uh, but for whatever reason, uh, it hasn't worked out in the, in the last few months. And I know Graham from you know, his time at Bristol Rovers now hard. He will have worked and strived to turn it round. But just that's the one thing about football sometimes it, no matter how you know hard you try it just doesn't quite work out and I think looking from the outside that was probably the case so all the players start now with a fresh page we judge them from here on in uh, there looks to be a good squad in place I believe there's room to uh, strengthen it in January which we would hope to do so the next two months will priority is getting results but also assessing the squad uh, and taking it from there we sneaked in to watch the game last Saturday uh, against Warsaw and we're very impressed with the performance and the attitude and the work rate within, within that performance as well as uh, was first class and very unlucky. Gary went to watch um, on Tuesday night at Bolton and Simon and came back and said exactly the same. Um, we've had a chat with the players this morning and said to them, without doing too much different, it could have been six points easily from the two games. But when you're down there, things don't quite go for you. Somebody gets a 90-minute equaliser and you end up with two draws instead of two wins. But I think it's encouraging only four, I think, four losses in the league this season. Although there's not been any wins, it's important. If you're getting battered every week and you're losing three and four nil, uh, then that's a different prospect. Uh, so all we've got to do is turn those draws into wins uh, and get up that table. Have you worked with any of these boys before? No, uh, I don't think so. I think a couple of lads might have been at Derby. Uh, I think Faz Rawson was at Derby as a youngster when we were there. Uh, but... No, not too many of them. We've played against James Perch plenty of times over the years uh, at different clubs. And, you know, Nicky Maynard as well. Uh, I think it always helps when you've got good senior players like that in the dressing room uh, who've had a career at higher levels and they can show the way for the younger players. What can the players expect from you as their new manager? Uh, honesty. I'll be honest with them. I'll be fair with them. And the one thing that uh, we expect in them is absolute maximum effort every time they step on the pitch. We'll forgive them one or two things after that, providing that effort is there. Uh, and I think generally we've always had a, a very, very good relationship with the vast majority of players we've worked with and go on and work with them again and again over the years. So uh, we'd like to build up those sorts of relationships with the, the current players. 
You touched upon this earlier, but how will you go about now endeavouring to transform the fortunes of this squad? Well, I think the last two performances uh, have, have shown that it's a little bit on the way already. I think Richard Cooper and the lads have, um, have done brilliant with lifting the team. When a manager leaves, it's always a difficult time. Um, I think the last two performances have been very good uh, and we just need to keep that going. Um, well, once we get in working with them in, in full on Monday, uh, then we'll start from there. But we'll just try and raise the spirits. Uh, and the biggest thing, and it's something you can't buy in football and you can't you can't give anybody until you win games is confidence. And that's, that's the main thing that we'll be lacking from the team. And I think if we can get a win or two, I think you'll see a different team. And apart from the obvious answer of winning football matches, how do you like your sides to play? I like to play football, uh, home and away. And we like to attack uh, as much as we can. There's times in the games where you certainly have to defend and you have to do it well. Uh, but generally speaking, we set our teams up to attack, I think, uh, last season we were the, at Burton, we were the joint top scorers away from home in the country along with Man City. Uh, so I think that shows how we approach things. Supporters pay good money to come and see and we want to try and entertain them. Even if they can't get in the ground, they're paying to watch it streamed or whatever at the moment. Uh, and we endeavour to put the best performance on we can. Ironic, isn't it, that the first game for you is against oh. your hometown club in Sunderland in the FA Cup this Saturday and also the man you're effectively succeeding, Richard Cooper, he was the caretaker manager, he was your boot boy at Nottingham Forest. Yeah, many years ago, I think when I went back on loan, I think we just crossed over a little bit, yeah. So uh, it's nice to have that connection, but uh, it's a seriously bizarre coincidence to be able to go um, back to Sunderland, uh, you know, hometown and everything. So although we didn't live there very long, uh, it was a place that was very special uh, to me, Dad. Uh, that's where he got injured and he, he really enjoyed playing football there as well as Middlesbrough. So it always held, holds a special place for us. One of the best stadiums in the country. I wish there was a crowd in there because, you know, when there's 20, 30,000 in there at least, uh, it's a hell of an atmosphere. Uh, but I'm looking forward to, to seeing uh, Phil Parkinson and Steve Parkin, of course, who was here uh, for many years ago. So nice to catch up with them. But uh, I think it's a brilliant game for the club at this stage. On the back of two good performances, FA Cup, nobody expects anything. Uh, let's go and have a go. Last few questions from me, Nigel. Let's refer to that match again this Saturday at the Stadium of Light. Will you be in the dugout or will you be watching from the stands? I think we'll be upstairs because I think uh, we've just been COVID tested this morning. So we've got to wait for the results uh, before we can actually join. We've uh, seen the players very briefly in, in line with all the protocols this morning. Um, but as soon as we get the results, which hopefully will be negative, then we'll be able to drive up tomorrow uh, and certainly watch the game. But I think, I think Richard and the team have done so well. I think it's a nice reward for them as well to take the team at the stadium alight. And we'll just pop our head in the dressing room and wish the lads good luck and, uh, and hopefully not too much more than that. So will you have an input into team selection, that type of thing? Yeah, we've had a chat this morning with Richard about it. And uh, fine, he'd uh, sort of got the team sorted and he's been preparing them. Uh, since Tuesday night, so uh, absolutely fine with all that he was saying this morning. And what are now your immediate priorities? Try and win a few games. That's it. We're not looking beyond anything. We talk about January and we talk about players and everything. Try and win a few games uh, as soon as we can. Uh, but as I, say, I, th I think the team and the squad are, are primed to do that. Finally, the supporters are greatly enthused by your appointment, Nigel. Good, that's always nice. What's your message to them? Uh, I hope we don't let you down and we're going to do everything we can to get the club into a position, a much, much better position than they're in now uh, and then try and build and please be, try and be patient with us. Uh, as I said, we're not miracle workers. We try and build a team and build a squad that you, first of all, supporters can identify with and that they can enjoy watching and will ultimately bring success to the, to the club. Very best of luck. Thank you. You always need a bit of that.